Hi there. Today we continue our review of The Smart Money Woman by Arisi Ugu. In chapter 1, we are introduced to Zuri, who earns 600k a month but is broke. We also learned what it means to be broke, what passive and active income is, what financial freedom is, and also how to calculate our net worth. Today we move on. In chapter 2, Zuri has been unable to sleep because of her financial situation. She has been ignoring her landlord and her mechanic, whom she eventually blocked on WhatsApp. She makes a presentation at work and in simple terms, her boss is unimpressed. He begins to wonder if he was wrong by hiring her. He had assumed that she had potential. Or was he wrong about her? Zuri's boss confronts her after the presentation and expresses his disappointment. He then goes ahead to inform her that he had nominated her to attend the upcoming Wimby's conference in bid to ginger her in his words. Zuri gets home and unfortunately meets her landlord, who makes a scene and resolves to accusing her of indulging in questionable behavior to pay her rent. She's enraged by this as it is not true. That night, however, Zuri sleeps better because despite the unfortunate confrontation earlier, she had done something big. She had confronted her biggest step. She goes ahead to try and ask her brothers abroad for some money, which proves unsuccessful, and then tries to get some money from her mom, who is appalled first of all that she's broke, but then is unable to help. The chapter ends with Zuri realizing two things. First off, that she had been careless with her money and thought that because she had a great job, she would never be hungry. Unfortunately, the bank of family bailout had failed her. Secondly, that she had worked for eight years and had nothing to show for it. And nothing to fall back on in case of a rock. So, what are smart money lessons for today? Lesson number one is that how we behave with money is deeply connected to our mindset about money. Lesson number two is that fear can stop you from taking action, but you must learn to face your fears. And lesson number three is that what you deny or ignore, you delay, but what you accept and you face, you conquer. And lesson number four is that successful people acknowledge their fears and do not allow them stop them from achieving their goals. Today we have a smart money activity and we'll be dealing with our money fears. The first thing I'd like you to do is make a list of your money fears. What fears do you have about money? Are you afraid that you will not be able to meet up with the lifestyle that society expects of you or that you have become accustomed to? Are you afraid that your business will fail? Are you afraid that you'll become dependent on others? What are your money fears? List them out. Secondly, write down why you have these money fears. Why do you have these money fears? Does it have something to do with your background, with your mindset about money, with how you've seen your family members or your friends handle money, write down the reasons why you have these fears. And the third and final thing, make a plan to counter each fear. I have one word for you today. The future you envision is bigger than your present fear. Don't allow your money fears stand in the way of your money dreams. So what happens next in Zuri's quest to deal with her messy financial situation? See you in chapter 3. Please share your questions, your comments and your thoughts in the comment section below. Share this video with your friends and please subscribe to my channel so you can get more content.